Good morning, everyone. It is great to be with you here this morning, and uh, I am I am just uh, encouraged today because uh, the grass is getting green outside up here in Mackinac City. The trees are budding. No leaves yet, but the trees are budding. The birds are chirping. We hear the seagulls coming into town, ready for the tourists so they can grab their food. Um, uh, just a lot of things going on here that give us an indication that um, uh, spring is indeed here. Um, life at some point in the future will be back to some semblance of normal. Um, but boy, it has been during these times that um, we have been challenged. And sometimes in being challenged and being in very difficult circumstances, people can question their faith. And I want to talk about that a little bit this morning, about questioning one's faith. I'm going to um, read a text in the Gospel of Matthew uh, as it relates to John the Baptist, who's in prison. And um, I want to deal with that a little bit uh, this morning. Um, I believe crisis is good for us as Christians. And why do I say that? When when you hear the word crisis, initially you think of bad, you, you think of negative, you think of um, something horrible that's going on in one's life, and you got to deal with it. Uh, I want to read for you the actual definition of crisis taken from my, my little Webster's Dictionary, which uh, doesn't give perhaps as many definitions as the, the big one does. Um, but here's what it says about crisis. An unstable or uncertain time or state of affairs, the outcome of which will have a major impact, the turning point for better or for worse in a disease or a fever or something as such, and we could go on. You see, crisis can be a good crisis or a bad crisis. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. Crisis could be that you found out you've got stage four cancer. That's, that's, uh, that's bad crisis. That's, that's tough to hear. It makes one think, okay, um, I'm being faced with the possibility of death, but there's still some hope. But good crisis could be um, the birth of a baby and it's changing everything. That's, that's good crisis, though. It's a crisis you deal with in which something has happened and, and uh, it changes your life. But that is, is, is good. So many times in our life, uh, crisis creates uh, enough shock in our life that it may cause us to, to doubt our faith. It may cause us to, to question our faith. John the Baptist is in that boat here this morning in Matthew chapter 11, and I'd like to read it for you, uh, first few verses about him and his situation. Uh, John, uh, Matthew 11, starting with verse one. After Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, go back and report to John. What you hear and see, the blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the one who does not fall away on account of me. Why was John the Baptist asking this question? I mean, John the Baptist was kind of at the forefront. He was the forerunner of Christ. He was the one preaching repentance at the River Jordan and baptizing folks. And in fact, he was the one who baptized Jesus in the River uh, uh, Jordan River. And uh, I would have assumed at this point, as he was having disciples of his own and teaching them about the one who was to come and such, that John would be rock solid in his faith. But what would you be like if you were one who was the forerunner of Jesus Christ, sharing with people about the one who was to come, and now you're in prison? Not only are you in prison, you get the idea that you may not be 
living much longer. You see, it wasn't long after this when John the Baptist was beheaded in prison. Uh, he had upset Herod and his forbidden wife, Herodias, uh, when uh, she was so ticked off at him and there was an opportunity through her daughter who was dancing before the king when they were probably drunk. And the king says, I'll give you whatever you want. And Herodias told the daughter, tell him I want John the Baptist's head on a platter. That indeed is what happened. John the Baptist was beheaded. Perhaps at this point, he knew uh, what was going to be coming. He knew that he wasn't going to leave prison. And so he's in a state of, is this one who I have been preaching about? Is this one who has come, is he really the one? He needed some confirmation. So he sends a couple of his disciples to go and ask. And Jesus' response, as we read in the text, was, look what's been happening here. And the good news is being preached. And they go back and they tell John the Baptist. And I'm sure at that point, John the Baptist was encouraged. And he's like, okay, my life is not in vain. And I can take whatever it is that's coming in the future. Do you doubt your faith sometimes? Do you wonder sometime if, if God is real? If, if Christ is who he said he was, if you can really tackle what it is that's going on in your life right now, if you really think there is much of a future ahead for you and, and you question that. I want you to know what John the Baptist discovered as well. And that is that Jesus is real. That Jesus really did do what he did. That his death, life, death, and resurrection had an effect on your life. Because you see, what he did, he did for you and I what we couldn't do for ourselves. And although you may have doubts in your life at times, I have told people on many occasions that our life in Christ is not based on our emotion, it's based on a promise. He is faithful and he is just and he has forgiven us of our sin. And he's the answer. You might be going through a difficult time like now, right now, like, like, like John the Baptist. To me, 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 not the same thing. I doubt any of you are going to be beheaded. <laughs> but you might be faced with crisis. Crisis that may, at the, at the beginning, sound like it's horrible. Crisis can bring about the best qualities in us as well as we lay it at the foot of the cross, as we give it to, to Christ, as we, as we let him know how we feel. And God, I am having doubts. As the centurion said, help me with my unbelief. And he does. We need to hear like John the Baptist heard. Jesus is about changing lives. Now, I believe in our world today, and some say, well, why then? And as I'm going through crisis, why can't I hear that the blind receive sight and the lame walk and those who have leprosy are cured and the deaf hear and the dead are raised? Why don't I see that all over the place in the world today? It is happening from time to time. But I want you to realize what Jesus was running into and throughout the Gospels, we hear this too. People were always wanting the miraculous. They were always wanting the healing. They were always wanting the answer to be what they had wanted the answer to be. And if Jesus always responded in the affirmative, what ends up happening over time is people are no longer responding to the Savior. They're responding to the fix. 
They want the miracle. And so people follow Jesus not because he is the savior of the world and performed the ultimate miracle, but because they want, but because they want their temporary fixes. They want the answer to their dilemma and their crisis to be the immediate and the, and the good answer. And sometimes that doesn't come. And so people are following the miracles rather than the miracle worker. And I want you to know that there is a miracle in store for every single one of us. And that miracle ultimately is when we breathe our last on this life, we have eternal life with him forever in heaven. But all the other crises that we go through in this life, we may have victory over some of those in this life and some we may not. We may have to live with some issues that we don't understand. And at times it might even cause us to doubt our faith, question our faith like John the Baptist. We just need that reassurance. And folks, that reassurance to me comes through his word. That reassurance comes through that fellowship with Jesus. That reassurance comes through prayer and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in, in my life and in your life to let us know that we're on track and we're gonna get there. Whether we have a fix in that present crisis that is satisfactory to us in the way we would like it to go or not, we will ultimately have that final miracle of resurrection, of eternity with him. So if you're doubting your faith right now because you personally are going through a crisis you don't understand or you have been filled with fear over um, what's going on in our globe today, just like I imagine there are those in fear back in World War II when they thought, what's going to happen? There's death all around us or whatever other crisis it was that, that went on on a global scale and, and it creates fear in us personally, I want you to know you need not fear. Be honest. And if you have doubts, talk to Jesus about those doubts. If you have doubts, go to God's word for encouragement. If you have doubts, Go to another believer, a brother or a sister in Christ and talk to them about your doubts. Go to John the Baptist who says, I, I, I don't know if I can handle this unless I know that you're it. And Jesus lets him know he's it. And if he's it, then whatever's ahead is okay. I can handle it. It's okay to have doubts, folks. But when it comes right down to it, put your faith and trust in the one is the answer, Jesus Christ. And know that he'll take you through whatever crisis it is you're going through. And in the end, you have guaranteed victory. You might be behind in the game right now, it's the fourth quarter of a football game and you're down by three touchdowns and you only have five minutes to go. But I'll tell you what, in Christ, I know we win. In the end, we win and you will win. Let me close with prayer. I wanna pray for those who have doubts right now. God, there's so many people out there that have doubts. They have doubts about you, they have doubts about Jesus Christ. They have doubts about this, this story told of in your holy word. Maybe they are believers and they've been so shaken that now they're questioning their faith. God, I pray, I pray from the depths of my soul that you'd help those who doubt to realize the anchor is still there. The truth is still there. You still did what you did on the cross at Calvary for them. 
You saved them, even in their doubt. Help us with what little faith we do have to put our faith and trust in you, even when we don't understand and realize that you're the answer. Again and again and again, dear God, you've told us if we put our faith and trust in your son, Jesus Christ, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That once we are your child, no one can take that away from us. And Romans chapter eight, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. So God, for those who doubt this morning, replace that doubt with trust in you. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.